again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy simmons Garthway, And I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> and it is November it and is we're getting November. centered because we're a little late because it's someone okay. else was taping. And, that's and now we're like in a little, sp- Yeah, it just throws you off a little bit sometimes, but that's okay. Spin. Um, and also we're heading into holiday season and planning season and there's just a lot I, You know what's funny? On. So Dan and I, because it's just the two of us, we don't have children. Um, neither of us has family. Your child, Jenny, is at my house yes, right now. Yes, Jenny is <laughs> occupying your child. Yes. <laughs> um, the, um, we don't have family in state or anything. So, and I'm just as an adult, you know, like, I just, I enjoy the holidays, but I have no need to cook a turkey. Like, I don't need <laughs> to have turkey. I do not feel that obligation to have to do the tr- every single tradition that every single person has ever done. Dan and I don't really exchange gifts because that seems kind of silly because if I want something, I buy it. If he wants something, you know, like, it's kind of funny. Um, a lot of times we will vacation during one of these holidays, but somehow we didn't do that this year. Um, but even still, it just feels like, whoo, all of a sudden it's going to happen because now we're trying to book We like to do things during the holidays. Uh, Like, for instance, we're going down to Boston sometime mid-December in a weekday to see Vitamin String Quartet. Nice. So we're doing that. And then I just booked tickets for the Nutcracker out at UNH. Uh, (laughs) That um, is a ballet. I think it's Northeast Ballet Theater. And we have friends. Sorry, that's That's a Seinfeld joke. I'm pretty sure. That is a Seinfeld (laughs) joke. their their kid their family members are in it so we're going out and see that and then i wonder if we won't go to dan always wants to go there's a theater up in conway in like a dome i don't know like you know like all the things go see the christmas carol go do this um go there's a great this goes i think into january but there's we last year we went out to maine just over the border into maine to this light festival oh yeah i remember but i saw that labelle winery and dairy has one this year so i might try that oh that's since it's right down the road instead of driving all the way to maine but it was wonderful it was definitely worth the drive, the cold, the tickets, everything. Yeah, I think people posted about yep. that. I know there's another one at the, uh, it's in Massachusetts. It must be their National Botanical Garden. Mm. One of the botanical mm. gardens also was advertising a really nice light festival. And there's some good uh, art exhibitions yep. coming to the Boston area. So I'm going to not talk about them because that's my secret present for <laughs> Louie's birthday. But, but it um, is, it's still, you start looking at the calendar and you're like, okay, I'm busy till the first of the year. Yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden it's winter, which is okay because that means I'm that much closer to camping season. I mean, I will say this for <laughs> folks who uh, are looking for something for Thanksgiving yeah. who might not have a place or a person to go to. Mm. Uh, I know the Independence Inn in... Um, Barrington, uh, Dover, Stafford, some place. Is that a place? That... It's kind of on the fr- free coast, sea coast. Air- yeah. Stratford? It's near Dover, Barrington, Lee, somewhere anyway, over in there. Anyway, if you Google Independence Inn, you'll find it. They're doing, uh, I think their first seating is sold out, but they are doing two, so yep. that's an option. And then Bedford, um, Murphy's Murphy's Tavern Inn, or whatever it is, Murphy's Tap Room in Bedford has a Thanksgiving brunch, t- not brunch, but a meal. I mean, and you know what's funny? It always sounds so expensive until you really think about it. It's like $49 a person, which sounds like a lot. Which is if you're going to be in and out in 30 minutes. But if you're going to sit and enjoy your dinner and spend, you know, yeah, and I mean, you're by the making time you buy it yeah. and all the fixing that comes with all the things. And I feel like there was another place here in Manchester that all oh, I think Gaucho's has a Thanksgiving thing. I think Dan and I have gone to Gaucho's once in a while. So there's lots, you know, people. Do, I always tell I, people, I like to do don't things. emphasize, don't overstress. And feel like you must do, I mean, you, you're, some people are going to, like, people overstress about buying gifts for everybody under the sun because somehow along the way, somebody told you you had to. I stopped buying gifts on demand probably 30 years ago. Now, do we sometimes give people gifts? Yes. <laughs> but it's because I saw something that I really wanted right. to give to somebody, yep. not that I was obligated to spend 30 to $35 on this gift. Yeah, you know, or, or find your friends and do Secret yeah. Santa or something right. like that. Yeah, we're going to go up to Bordeaux, I think, for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then, 
Yeah, and then it's all the Christmas stuff yeah. coming up, and and you know, obviously organizational yeah. parties. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, you know, all of it. Yeah. So it's it's the end of the year. So one, we should enjoy it. Two, don't let it stress you right. out because really, it's all within Life's your too control. Short. Yeah, and and honestly, I mean, it's supposed to be a fun time. Right. So anyone who's like freaking out because they have a million things to do, take a deep breath. Yep. It'll all be okay. Yes, it will. Um, all right, what do we have? Um, I got I got some right to know yeah, shenanigans. I saw, I, 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 well, I printed that actually. The the so so the headline says former cop seeks to keep file secret. The subheading, which Carla can't see without her glasses, I know. give me a second here. High court to decide if more, more recent rulings on right to know law compel disclosures of internal affair documents that led to his negotiated resignation. And so this stems from like something that happened in like, 2006. I, right. So it's almost 10 years old. And honestly, even though I'm like a big, big You're proponent. Okay. I'm glad that we're of, not going to be disagreeing on this. I'm like, of, this is of, a bit. Of right to know and of open government and all of that. I'm like. Actually, the way the legal system works is you don't apply new rulings ex post facto right. backwards right. because that would mean that every time we change a law or if there's a new like court case right. or a new decision that comes out, you have to go back to the beginning of time, or re right. you know do well, and, every case. And like I was reading in this and article, was a contract. right? I was gonna say so. This gentleman. But now I do want to know what this what, dude did, and well, I'm going to sniff around. So there was something happened in Claremont. That's all I know. Something happened with this involved, maybe involving this police officer, maybe not oh, involving. Oh, no, it's clearly involving right. this police officer who's now a sitting elected He's a state, state rep, rep, and I think he's a town counselor. counselor. Or but anyways, so So, I mean, happened. actually, because he's actually still in public office, I might be persuaded that there is a compelling public interest in knowing. So, but if anyone wait, time, knows did, anything about this I did, guy, his, and you want to leak something to us, so what? I on that note, because I tried to, I was trying to Jonathan wait, Stone is his name. Um, trying to decide the same thing because he reached an agreement with his employer, the city of Claremont, to say, "I will resign with these conditions." You know, I will voluntarily resign so that we can just resolve this. Whatever the case may be. You know, like, yeah, everybody wants to know. Oh, fine. And they said, yes, this is the agreement. So they did have a binding agreement based on what the law provided for at the time, like you were saying. Now some, you know, 16 years, 17 years later, or 16 years later, the law changes, which was for the bet, for good. But, but does that... It, does that nullify the contract based on the law back then? And I don't think so. And I did read, he had a good point. Cause I was like, okay, he is in the current elected official. Okay, let's go with that. But he says that his opponents also have, you know, they also have skeletons in their closet and are they obligated to talk about those or is it only his skeletons? And I was like, yeah, see, this is why you can't go back and undo stuff from the past. I mean, I don't think leg legally he has a leg to stand on. I don't think they can go back. Mm. Now, the question becomes... Will they is different than should they. Um, you know, well, I mean, honestly, it could be like, uh, why don't you actually come clean? If you're honorable and you have, you know, it's been 15 years, clearly it didn't ruin right. your life, you're still elected. But because... So why not come forward and be like... Actually, this is well, what happened here. The, the line that he says in truth. here, which I think he says, um, you have counselors that had background issues, restraining orders, and you just never see their names mentioned. And I thought, that's fair. So he's, so think about it. So now you got, you know, however many people we're talking about, and only he, because of something from 16 years ago, well, I, has to now dredge up something from 16 years ago, which may or may not have been wrong. I, I'm not sure if it was clear in the article and I missed it, or if it wasn't clear, is I was kind of like, why is this bubbling up now? Well, like, what is the impetus He for is it saying to because he was running for office. So... And his opponents brought it up. Uh, I mean, it's it's fair game. I don't think legally they can force the issue. Mm. But again, I think they can use it to their advantage to mm. say that, well, obviously he's, uh, you know, there's something dirty here. And, you know, do you have skeletons in your closet? And then 
in politics, I mean, he should not say the other people. He should start naming names of people mm. who have their restraining orders, and then mm. we'll just have everyone slinging muck at each other. Well, as, I think the reason he probably doesn't do. is because he knows there's restraining orders because he used to be a police officer and doesn't want to I mean, disclose. those should be They are public, public, they are yeah, public well, record, but only if you know to look for them. Right. But, so, I yeah, mean, so you, that, if you knew I, I did the find opponent's name and... Um, and, you know, I, I actually, we have Liberty Forum coming up mm -hmm. in, in March next year, March 14th through the 17th. So people who are yes, curious about like topics that we often talk about here, uh, definitely check it out. It's a great conference. The tickets are for sale, nhlibertyforum.com. But we're going to put together a Right to yeah. Know panel and have that Lori Ortolano, yep. who's yeah, done yep. so much work, won the First Amendment Award, all of that. So if this is like a subject where you're like, man, I really need to learn more. Honestly, I've been been doing this work for four or five years yeah. on the on the board itself of right to know but also just you know over the years with open government and i can't keep no the it's very story it's straight. a lot there's uh, a the lot of like, exceptions you know yeah the exceptions have now become so laborious and so yes. ridiculous that no one really knows we're still in the situation where the ag uh formella will not, you know, update the memo so no one really knows what's going on. Municipal is saying crazy stuff. Like, they've started to say the right to know only applies to New Hampshire residents. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, and I'm like, when what did that, that? Where is it say so, that? So how are we going to qualify this? Are we going to be looking people up? What means you're a New Hampshire but resident? Then, what is this qualify? So in, in the weird, confusion, man. so I do get the right to know emails, right? And I just happened to click on one the other day, and it was somebody, and I was like, okay, but then even people involved sometimes don't know. And it was somebody who said, well, I emailed my alderman or whatever it was, and they never responded. Isn't that, aren't they obligated under right to know? And I was like, no, they're not obligated to respond. They should respond. See, but it's, it's interesting. They're obviously not, unless you're like actually requesting information. But then that's, you have to, there's a process. Like we but, have to Well, go there the is and there isn't because this interesting thing happened in the past. When I started uh, writing uh, some uh, choice messages to our Manchester Police Department over the years, I would be asking stuff, but it wasn't an official right mm -hmm. to know request. And they would immediately reply to my stuff and be like, we are treating this subject to the right to know laws of New Hampshire, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. or dude, you could have just, just answered my question. Right. All right, now right. we're going to rock oh, and roll. Oh, I do definitely <laughs> think there's a resistance a lot of times. It's well, like they get their haunches up. Well, that and, is what. And sometimes maybe it would just be easier if we had a conversation like, hey, I was just wondering, what's the data on blah, blah, blah. Well, it also makes And then it usually will appease the person like half the time. I would get the data, I think, and I'd be like, like oh, oh did you know. And, and <coughs> excuse me, I think that raises a really good question. Um, we know in Nashua that became an issue where they actually said that uh, because of Lori or Ortolano's cases, the the municipal office of Nashua, city of Nashua, has to take remedial right to know classes. Okay? So that they know. So that they know. But then also somewhere in that whole relationship, it started to talk about this um, non-collaborative and very uh, conflict-driven yeah. sort of dynamic that is Growing come out, out of, of that this, is yes. growing right and i think it is partly because a lot of people are sort of anti-state or more for small government so they're frustrated because the government just keeps growing and growing and taxing us more and taking all our stuff and getting in the way of you know small house mm -hmm. dwellings so now we have a housing crisis everywhere where the finger of the government is in the pie they're just making stuff worse right so there is a bit of that conflict that has developed but a way to return normalcy is to actually be like just answer the question right. does everyone have to act like they're shady well, and it's not and they're right. corrupt it is and they're the hiding stuff again, it and they're be. lying and it, and why are these secrets those i mean when you're when i'm like hey tell me and you're like no, no. i'm i'm going to be like like what are you hiding? Right. Right. It does it does breed skepticism and cynicism because like I said, often if you could just see the numbers and di or whatever, if you could see the information and digest it yourself, like in Lori Ortolano's case, she fe originally felt she was being assessed differently than her neighbors. And the 
problem came, they wouldn't give her the cards for the neighbors. So you're either not giving her the cards because she is being assessed differently, or you're not giving her the cards because your haunches went up and I don't have to give you the cards. But if they had just given her the the cards, cards. years wouldn't have passed and it probably would not have cost the city of Manchester or city of Nashua taxpayers money. So like, you could have just done it because somebody, if they were doing it wrong, so and Just let's own it. talk about it like the the town of Rochester, where there's still an online newspaper. Mm. The editor there has now been told that he he's he's the editor of an online newspaper. He's been doing it for scores of years, right. like in two decades. And the city is like, you filed so many right to know requests, so now we're just not going to answer. We're just not going to talk to you anymore. And I'm like, but but the role of the press, (laughs) which has kind of disappeared, right? Right. Like when you think about what's happened, is they destroyed, they, um, (laughs) they, uh, the. The, the media, right? Like right. The fourth estate's entire job was to cover things like stupid school board meetings so that you knew what was happening and people could read the paper and we could hold people accountable in real time. All of that has gone away. And so there's no accountability because no one's really covering the small stuff. But ask yourself, is our local news not more important than what's happening in Israel and Palestine. Well, I mean, it should be as equally as important, but, right? But what happens there doesn't, doesn't actually directly impa- impact other than us. stealing your money and my money and whatnot. I mean, paying for the war and the harm and the horror and the death and you know all the reasons I'm anti-war, of course, exist, and I have compassion for those people. But we should just care about what's happening in our own backyards. And the best way to describe that is. Um, I saw a quote once and it said, we were not designed, we being humans, we're not designed to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. And the way social media has now been designed and the way we process our information has just distorted yes. our, our, our attention span and distorted what we like freak out about and care about. And if we can get the focus back to Christmas trees in our local um locales that would be a better approach so um, i do want to talk about one thing just because i want to get this off my chest because this is just an irk so yesterday or the day before there was an article and i don't the subject matter is irrelevant to me that's the, where my irk comes in the headline was house panel can't reach consensus on transgender bills which made me go well i gotta read that so the um house Health, Human Services, and Elderly Affairs Committee had, I believe, three bills, and I could be wrong, yet three bills um, that they couldn't come to a consensus. It was a split. It was a 10-10 split, which means they'll go to the full house with no recommendation. So then I had to go look, and I've got the article in front of me, and I did go back and look at the bills because sometimes what we say the bill is and what it actually says in there. And my irk was... So here's how legislation, in my opinion, should work. And I think the New Hampshire Constitution probably would back this up. When you're writing a law, the law should apply to everyone. Yes. If you say the speed limit is 65, it's not except for people with red hair. Red-haired people. Let's pick on the witches. No, no, I'm just saying. (laughs) Red-haired people should be able to go 80 because... Hey, I like this law. I'm just saying. Like, there's no... That doesn't make sense. So in this article, there are three bills, and they all... They transgender bills. These should not be transgender bills. These should just be Human rights bills, right? So if you're giving rights to someone... We give, give them, them to, to all of them. humans or if equally. You're... Otherwise, it's not a right. It's some kind of entitlement. Right. And then we got to use our words right. So they say this. Um, let's see. One was to prevent prosecutors in other states from pursuing transgender residents who receive health care here that could be against the law elsewhere. And I thought, okay, that's so that's stupid. stupid. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if we need to clarify that prosecutors in Ohio can't hold people in New Hampshire responsible for breaking a law in Ohio, but it shouldn't take out the word, let's take out the word transgender. Prevent prosecutors in other states from pursuing residents who receive care. Okay. Like, why is it, what's it got to do with transgender? It has nothing to do with transgender. Then there's a bill that would protect minors by passing legislation that would outlaw elective surgery for young people that alter genitalia. And I go, okay, can we just scratch that alter genitalia? How about 
We outlaw elective surgery for minors. I mean, in just New all Hampshire, elective. You can't get your ears pierced. You I mean, can't get a tattoo. Why would you be able to get elective? We're not talking about required surgery. Medically. We're talking about elective surgery. How about we just make it generic and say, I mean, in New Hampshire, to be fair, you cannot, as a child under 18 years use old, tan use a tanning booth. But you can so apparently if we think alter that that was a reasonable law to pass. Right. Then we can outlaw all uh, elective, elective right. surgery. So I was like, again, why is it? I'm not saying we should do so that. So we should only record, outlaw electric sur elective surgeries for this particular thing. But no. this is, I mean, some of this crazy stuff is just a response to other crazy stuff. And, and then everyone's like, well, this law, now we got to write this law. The third one is a bill which seeks to permit residents to go to a city or town hall to seek a name change on their birth certificate. Only, but if you read the legislation, it's only because you want, you're changing your gender. And I'm like, so wait a minute. I, if I would like to cha legally change my middle name, need to go to a probate court or something to get permission. And then the court will issue an order and then the city clerk makes the change. But if I'm doing it because I'm transgender, I, I can skip this it's, it's, so again. I have a way to solve, I think, some of these problems. So we have a system under the law that talks about emancipated minors. Mm -hmm. And in order to become an emancipated mm -hmm. minor, which means you are you have the co cognitive function and your copus mentis, i.e. you can make decisions for yourself, which a judge has, has to, decide. to decide on, then you can do what you whatever you want. <laughs> but if you are not a liberated, emancipated minor, then perhaps if a judge is not willing to say you have the faculties to decide whether to open a bank account, then maybe you don't have the well, faculties and, I mean, in the argument, to decide certain things that are permanent that you may or may not regret. And in I, the future. I I agree with you 100 percent I laugh because in the article it basically comes down to now. Now, Carly, you're just trying to make the transgender tr journey harder for these people. And I'm like, no, it has nothing to do with no, this I'm issue. No, I'm saying there is a legal system is. that has existed since yeah. Roman times. Yeah. This is a common law concept that yes. we could all wrap our heads around. If you want to be treated as an adult to do crazy things like elective surgeries, whether it's a boob job, right. or a, a, because you want bigger boobs, right. or a, some bottom surgery, or whatever, or, whatever, or nose fixed, job, whatever. or you not, know. Not something that is not actually needed. needed. Then why can't we say, let's use the system that's been in place for millennia to do it. I mean, that is the way to solve this problem where it doesn't become about anything. It shouldn't be about with one particular issue. Sexuality. Exactly. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Right. So, yes. Yeah, that just is a nerk. I read that and I was like, this is not how laws should be written. And I say this all the time when you read a law as a legislator or when you're reviewing bills or whatever, you know, when you read it and you're like, why are we writing like it's just like they say when you're writing laws you don't want to start spelling things out you you don't want to say like there's a there's a part of the labor law that says um a tipped employee is somebody who, and i'm paraphrasing and i might have the details wrong tipped employee is someone who regularly gets i think it's either 35 or 40 dollars and it's like a month in tips <laughs> in the following fields so then it's like for waiters and wait staff and bartenders and cab drivers, you know, like this. And we had a bill once and we were like, well, why does it say that? What about golf caddies? Instead of saying where the majority of your money is derived yeah, from, from tips, tips or something. So, but as soon as you start spelling it out, we had to change the law, I think, because um, Hampton, Hampton Casino Ballroom is not a restaurant, nor it is a ballroom. It's got its own category. So it didn't fit in there, even though those people working in there were doing the same thing as in any other well, restaurant. And I it mean, was like, oh my God, stop listing things out because everyone it causes knows, a problem. Everyone knows, I'm just gonna say, the more we write things down to try and mitigate whoever is butthurt from yep. the, the year before, we are just making things worse. The way things should work, you know, it's, it's to me it feels like we're back in a cycle. We're, we're gonna head back to the 60s, guys, in the sense that 
it's going to all come full, full circle. We're going to be back to it's about human rights. And this is actually maybe a plus that can come out of this big globalized push, right? Like there's this push to globalization. And I'm like, it's all bad because it's all trying to make us like one, one big happy right? something. But the thing is, you, you disregard that people have different languages, different values, different, different religions, everything. different everything, right? Eye color, skin color, like all of it, right? But then the question becomes, what is the core that unifies all of us? And we used to call those human rights, and we used to understand what they are, and we need to go back to that because all this polarization which in, is what in that fighting, is. creating special classes of people is the government's way of dividing yeah. humans so we're all fighting each other instead of fighting the state. Completely unrelated to government. Probably not completely unrelated to government. But the other one is similar vein talking about how we're all different, but yet there's common themes. I do not understand why so many people get so upset when people say happy holidays. <laughs> Well, I understand. It's not like I often say happy holidays because right now there's many holidays coming up. There's Thanksgiving, there's Christmas, whatever. That doesn't mean I don't say Merry Christmas. But the reality is there are numerous religions celebrating holidays. There's their holy days around the same so time. So do people really get upset or is this something we're told happens or people that know. you read about? Because I'm starting to notice that there are these tropes. There are these yeah. things that we say like, oh, people get mad about happy holidays. And I'm like, show me one example. Well, no, but I mean, I it's did, possible. I'm I not saying it's not. I did see a, a, a Facebook friend who doesn't live in New Hampshire, so it's, they're not gonna be offended. But they posted this meme that said, don't forget why it's called, why we say Merry Christmas. And I thought, well, nobody's de nobody's denigrating the holiday of Christmas and the, the religious value there is. I also know that the Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah. Right. And there's, I believe, a Mus there's a Muslim. There's you know, Kwanzaa. There's, there's, Kwanzaa. Coming there's up. all these things. And you know what? It depends on who I'm talking to. I am not offended if somebody says to me during the holiday season, happy Hanukkah. I'm not Jewish and I don't take offense to the fact that somebody Look, who- Look, anyone who- any, If you're here, wishing here, happy here, anything here, on I anybody, just gonna why say is that. anybody upset by so, it? So let's make this a rule. If it goes happy, fill in the just blank. Stop. Just love it. Mer just, look let's it, spread happiness, more love. Marry this. Joy this, this, this. Whatever. It's all good. More smiles, less frowns. More love, less yep. hate, less fighting each other about stupid, stupid, yep. stupid stuff. Remember, we're just all, you know. We're just all trying just to get through the day. <laughs> trying to get through the day, trying to make life better. So I think that's all we have for time. I don't. I was watching and we were yeah, getting close. We're um, so next week we should be taping, I think. Yeah. Wednesday. It is Thanksgiving week, but we, there's no reason why we probably won't tape. Um, if you have any ideas, suggestions, I do want to say quickly, the on the um, weekend of the holiday parade, which is on December 2nd, uh, Freedom Movement New Hampshire is doing a festival of trees, which will be located at Framers Market. There'll be um, decorated trees for you to bid on. Um, you can come in on Saturday or Sunday up to the Framers Market at 1301 Elm Street and bid on trees um, to help us raise money to continue to outfit the house that will be able to hold... Um, be a home for 24 men in recovery for like a year. So, And, and if you need like a shortcut for your brain yeah, like I do, I think do. about it as you're coming to bid on a Christmas tree that is also a gift basket. Right. Think of a gift basket in the shape of a tree. That's the way. Um, that's all we got. We'll be back next week. Um, if you have any ideas, suggestions, all that mumbo jumbo stuff, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.